Hello and welcome to Crazy Danish Hacker. Today we're going to do more hacks. First, we'll need to open VMware Player and continue from our previous session. Hit the play button. And here we go. Let's go full screen. Click the full screen button. And let's see. We can close this window. We can go back here. And we can clear everything. So we have a fresh start. Let's just close these as well. And move this over here. Close these repeater tabs and these intruder tabs. We will also um, disable C server, so it doesn't take ages to do something. So I will just find it under extender. Here it is. Extensions, and we will just tick this and unload it by clicking yes. So now it's not running anymore, and that way uh, we won't have requests taking like forever to load. So we'll just move this to the center. Log in with admin password. Here we go. And let's look at command injection. See, let's say 27.0.0.1. So this, in this case, the input into this parameter is most likely unfiltered. So that means that we can probably execute other commands and even get the input back to us. So since we are running this against, um, we are running it against Linux, we will have to do some Linux uh, sequence escaping. So what we can do is that we can specify an IP address and then the semico semicolon, yeah, I think it's called semicolon, um, this character here. This will basically enable us to run another command. So let's try ls for example, see what happens. So we run this and it will take four seconds to run. And it's listing the local files. That's neat. Let's try and read a file maybe. Let's see, cat, etc. password. That's the list of the current users on the local system. So let's see. And we have a list of users. Now, right now we're only, uh, we're only reading stuff, you know, we're only getting data back. And the issue here is that uh, this file doesn't contain any passwords. It only contains username. This is that the password is stored in the shadow file. This is the use ID, I think. This is the group ID, as far as I know. I can't remember what's supposed to be here. I think that's the comment field. That's the home folder. And that's the login shell. Um, when you log into the user, then this will specify if the user can get a shell. And in this case, that Radish user cannot log in and get a shell. Anyway, just reading data can be pretty boring. So let's open a terminal. Here we go. A bit weird that it was like that. Let's see, no. Okay. Looks like we have several of them open. Ah, okay. Okay. This one is our text editor, so we'll just leave that be. And we will make this a little bit bigger. So with command injection you can inject any command. Um, it can be anything that we can run on Linux. It can be cat as in read a file, ls list the directory. It can even be echo as well. So we could try and write a new file to the web server and then execute that. So maybe try that just for, for fun. So we make sure that, the, uh, that it's going through burp. Make sure intercept, intercept is on, click the submit button, and look here, right click, send to repeater, and let's see, it's going to take four seconds, 
come on, there we go. And let's just scroll down so where it starts, it starts around the pre-tag. So now it's all scrolling there. Let's see what happens. Yep. And if we do it like this, it's listing the files. So now we can just um, change it here. Let's see if we need uh, some type of encoding for spaces or not before we try to write a file. So we'll just write it like this, see what happens. No, we don't. Okay, we don't need to encode spaces, so that's good. So in that case, we can we can check what what is what is the current user because uh, if we know what the current user is, we we have some more uh, thing some more room to play with, some more information about what we can and cannot do. So we are the web server user. So that means that we can do what we can. We have the same permissions as is listed, for example, here in this directory in a few moments. So you can see here that uh, this is the current directory, this dot, right here. And since we are the WW data user, we have read, write, and execute permissions in this folder. So that means that we can write a new file and we can uh, execute it as well. We can probably even set the file to be executable. So let's create a new file. And to do that, I'll just open a new terminal. Here we go. I'll just show you what I'm intending to do. So, uh, new file stuff. So, the way that I will that I, that you can create a new file is that you can echo, for example, something like echo like this. Just have test. But if you write it like this and then test file, um, the output from this command here will be piped into a file. So now we have a new file called test file. And if you read that file, it will say test, because that's what we wrote here. So echo, and then let's see if we uh, escape this with a backslash, see what happens. Backdoor. Now it's working. So that means that we need to escape this with a backslash, so it doesn't think that this is a variable inside bash. Um, and bash is basically this shell here. This is like a command. This is that's the name for this command prompt. Um, you you can have different types of command prompts, but this is bash. So we'll just exit this, remove that uh, backdoor file from here. Remove. Here we go, and we will just write the file again. Bam. And we will read that file. Just auto scroll to that pre tag. Auto scroll. There we go. And now it's there. It's exactly like we wanted to. So, what this does is that this will execute a command on the system using, for example, the, the shell. So now we can execute commands directly if we want to using the get parameter. So if we try to do this, it will list files or who am I? Now the issue with this is that we need to UL encode our stuff because as far as I can remember, um, oh, okay, we don't need to, but the input is, the output is horrible. If we do the view source, it, it looks better. So now we can uh, we can we can more easily read it, even if we supply it like this. Um, in some cases, uh, I've seen that you need to encode the spaces with like pluses or percentage twenty, which is the equi equivalent of a space. So now we can execute commands again, and we can we can do it without that other stuff. So that that's neat. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and subscribe.